Ladies and gentlemen, this is Game and Silicon video. We're going to be going through all of the interesting pieces of tech news over the past 24 or so hours, primarily focused on gaming, but we're also going to be throwing some other stuff in there anyway. First things first, we're going to be talking about Intel, talking a cross-licensing deal with AMD with their GPUs, which is something I didn't think I'd be saying anytime soon. Uh, then we're going to switch over to Camp Green, also known as NVIDIA, where some supposed Pascal 3D Mark entries have been spotted, and also some news concerning Gameworks, where it's becoming open source, which is actually fantastic news, at least in my opinion. So, first things first, AMD and Intel, since it's first alphabetically, as usual. Now, NVIDIA and Intel have had a fairly productive but also somewhat tenuous relationship and it's set to expire at the Q1 2017 so around a year however whispers have started to transpire in the wind and essentially it looks like Intel are no longer happy with its relationship which is not so great for Nvidia but great news for AMD now just to give you an idea of how this works AMD are, I'm sorry, NVIDIA are currently receiving about $66 million per quarter, which is about $264 million per fiscal year, which is not terrible. That's because it, sell, it gets a, a piece of the pie for every iGPU Intel ships, and that's obviously quite a few. Now, these rumblings do originate from Bloomberg, which is obviously a fairly reputable source, if I do say so myself, that Intel are now talking with its primary competitor in the CPU marketplace, AMD. Why? Well, there are a plethora of different reasons. Back in the day, Intel actually decided to take a leaf out of AMD's book because it went with FreeSync technology, also known as Visa A-Sync, over G-Sync. Now, that is obviously how monitors can better change their refresh rate based upon what's being processed by the GPU. Another recent report, just a few days ago, is that Skull Canyon NUC will support AMD's X-Connect technology, which is rather interesting, and it also shows that Intel, as a company, are pretty, pretty best buddies when it comes to, I guess you could say, open source, which, let's face it, NVIDIA and open source have not exactly been in the same sentence apart from NVIDIA do not like open source, although that is somewhat changing to be fair to them. Currently, the most powerful GPU that Intel offer is the Iris Pro 5080, 580, excuse me, which is equivalent to roughly the GTX 750-ish, which is not bad considering it is an integrated GPU. You know, it's not like it's plugging into a PCIe slot with about 4,000 watts of energy running to it. It's essentially connected to a little CPU. And this means that cross-licensing is going to potentially be a thing with AMD. Because let's face it, it would make a lot of sense with AMD's work in APUs, it would make sense with AMD's work towards Polaris and the fact that they keep banging on, banging on excuse me, about performance per watt. Barons have recently said, uh, this is a quote from Christopher Lo Rowland, who is a market perform ratings, um, when, sorry, he's checking the market performance ratings on shares of AMD. He says, and I quote, for Intel, a potential deal would enable the company to boost graphics performance in their own chips, or perhaps to use high performance GPUs in areas in data centers. While it's likely that the motivation of Intel, such as the deal might give them IP ammunition, just in case Nvidia decided to renew litigation once their cross licensing agreement expires. Now, obviously, there's still probably going to be a few problems with all of this and just how this is going to end in the long term is a bit of a mystery but especially when you start factoring in a lot of the um i guess you could say cuda related uh, subject matters which have to be fair started to somewhat iron themselves out anyway but it, it's just a bit of a mystery how all of this is going to come together. I wouldn't be surprised because this is... It's kind of ironic because AMD and AMD and Intel are actually slightly better terms 
which I can't believe I'm saying this because, you know, I, I didn't think I'd ever be saying this back in uh, early 2000s slash late 90s. They're on better terms now than what they have been, you know, in the early days and probably better terms than what they are with NVIDIA, which is just absolutely crazy. And we all know that NVIDIA are the subject of a lot of lawsuits at the moment, although specifically they are really on NVIDIA versus Samsung, because they started those because of the whole, well, we invented the GPU, but it was just not actually upheld in court. Anyway, I could bang on about this for a lot more time, but I won't. Instead, I want to move on to actually NVIDIA, ironically enough. Now, we're going to move over to Camp Green. So, the performance of NVIDIA's Pascal architecture has been somewhat up in the air. Let's just say that. There's been a lot of leaks, a lot of engineering samples that we know have been shipped, for example, that have popped through Zuba. But exactly what the GPUs are going to be capable of are completely down to, well, guesswork at this point. However, what's rather interesting is that supposedly we are seeing some test results from NVIDIA's Pascal. Now, there are multiple entries and these um, GPUs range from performance of, let's say, the GTX 970 all the way up to something along the lines of a GTX 980 Ti-ish. This means that most likely we're not seeing the bleeding edge Pascals. These are not the equivalents of the Titan. Instead, we're seeing like the mid range because that's generally what happens in graphics cards, of course. You see the mid range um, of the new generation typically replace what was um, the high end of the previous gen generation, as you know. Now, what does all of that mean for you and I? Well, in this case, we'll be starting out with the first entry. Um, which has a score of 9038. What's rather interesting, however, is that the actual system does not correctly recognize the graphics card. The core clock is just 545 megahertz, the memory clock is 2002 megahertz, and the memory is reading as 7680 megabytes, which is kind of weird. Then we have another entry of around 11,678, which also reads to have eight gigabytes of memory, 540 megahertz core clock. And then we're gonna go down to 11,000, 11, excuse me, 534, with very similar amounts of memory and a core clock of 540. So why is all of that interesting? Well, the biggest point is the core clock. Typically, when 3D Mark is like, help me, where's my medicine? I do not know what this GPU is. It just puts any old number there. And in this case, it's, its default is 540 megahertz. It's kind of like the programmers just was like, yeah, we'll just put anything in. Unfortunately, we don't know whether these results are genuine. Your guess is as good as mine. Some people, of course, want to believe that they are real which is fair enough, it's one way to go. I'm pretty sure that some people would require so much verification that even an NVIDIA employee posting results on their own Twitter would not be believed. It would have to be that they're benchmarking themselves. That's just how some people are. I'm kind of in the middle. I wouldn't be surprised if these are genuine, particularly considering that they're not outlandish results. They're roughly what you'd expect. But... Of course, your mileage may vary. I'm just reporting it because I find it rather interesting. Now, the last thing I do want to talk about, and I'm actually really chuffed about this one, I'm pretty happy, is NVIDIA are essentially opening up Gameworks' source code and allowing you to modify it, tweak it, and do whatever you need to do with it. So NVIDIA's Gameworks has been the subject of a lot of opinion in the industry. Um, many have criticised it, whether it's AMD, whether it's developers, whether it's gamers. Everyone's had an opinion on it. Some people love it because it means that they can put in various features, for example, improved anti-aliasing or lighting or what have you, fairly easily into the game. Others hate it because it's been essentially a black box. What this means is that you can't tweak the code. So let's say that you're a developer and you're working on a title. You can't say, well, 
I want to tweak it to get better performance or I want to tweak it because it's not working quite, quite right with my engine or I want to tweak it to add something in or maybe it's too much for your title maybe you're seeing performance um, degradation therefore you want to maybe remove certain elements of it you can't do that it's basically all or nothing you're just locked in which isn't ideal but Nvidia are finally at GDC they've announced that they are finally opening up the source code already available is physics physics clothing and physics destruction they're adding during GDC volumetric lighting and face works and coming soon is going to be Hairworks, HBAO plus and waveworks this means two things. Firstly for, well actually three things. Firstly for AMD, it means that they should be able to start optimizing the code towards their own drivers. For developers, it means that they should be able to work on better integrating game works into their titles. So once again, they're gonna get better performance. And for us as gamers, we should see a rather interesting future because potentially AMD and Gameworks or rather AMD's GPU open in Gameworks could exist in the same game where a developer could choose, hey, I'm going to choose physics and I'm going to choose HBAO plus and I'm going to create some crazy abomination where I'm also putting in Tress FX to work with hair and I'm also putting in Waveworks to do with this and I'm putting this to do with this and it could just be this crazy crazy combination of technology and that's a good thing that really is it means that we as gamers are going to get better looking titles so i've been critical about a um about nvidia's policies regarding this i have been and i'll give them credit credit is given where credit is due and i definitely i'm really happy that nvidia are opening up gameworks it's not quite there and the terms of use are not quite as robust as maybe with hope at least that's some of the reports but it's still a little early yet the question therefore remains what nvidia are going to be doing with cuda now we all know that amd and otoy are working to basically port or allow the porting of native cuda source code that's the important keyword source code it can't just be well, the compiled binary it has to be source code to either C++ or OpenCL. Uh, C++ if you're AMD or OpenCL if you're Otoy. But NVIDIA might decide to rain on their parade somewhat and just say, hey, we're going to open this up because they want to still have somewhat of a control of the market. I also wouldn't be surprised if NVIDIA are being pushed towards opening up Gameworks purely as a counter to AMD's GPU Open initiative or because of the frustrations that a lot of gamers and developers have started to um, push towards NVIDIA. And obviously, it's great to have control of a market, but if you're pissing off your customers, um, it's bad, you know, like people have already started on the internet as they do to criticize Nvidia or a company for something very specific and in Nvidia's case it's not good that some people have actually said that they won't buy a game because it's got game works in it and this goes not just for AMD users or Intel users but sometimes even Nvidia's own users. In fact I've seen quite literally memes which call it gimp works and I wouldn't quite go that far there are issues with certain games for example Batman but typically it runs okay-ish in most instances but regardless this is a positive step in my opinion anyway hopefully you've enjoyed the video I'll see you soon take care bye for now